Hey, what's up guys? This is Cole with CJC Off-Road. Now today we have more of a tech oriented video for you guys. Um, every single day you guys ask us, what tire pressure do I run in my truck? So what we wanna do is basically show you guys the theory behind the tire pressures we rec recommend on these trucks, what we run on our personal trucks, and how do you figure out what those pressures need to be for your particular truck. Now, um, this is something that's very important because right after suspension, tire pressure is one of the most significant factors of ride quality on these trucks. Uh, you may hear the term small bump compliance, all these aftermarket suspensions, no matter how soft they are, um, it doesn't matter if your tires are too stiff or if they're overinflated. And having the recommended or proper tire pressure under your truck is going to be the difference between a nice riding, nice handling, nice steering truck versus something that feels stiff or all over the road. Uh, so it's very critical uh, when we put these trucks together that, we were, that we're very specific and very intentional with the tire pressures we run on these builds. Tires can be very expensive as well. So if you're running, uh, say, too much pressure, what will actually happen is it'll round out the tire. The center of the tire will actually be what's contacting the road and will actually result in the tires not lasting nearly as long as they should. So we can't stress enough uh, when we put these trucks together how important it is to run the recommended tire pressures for your build. Uh, behind me right now, I actually have the perfect example. This is our shop power wagon. Uh, this truck's on a very popular tire, Toyo MT 37, 13 half by 17s. Um, Toyo actually has what they call a load inflation index on their website. Uh, this is something you may see tossed around the internet, people talking about it. And what this inflation table does is it shows you at a given PSI uh, what the tire's max load rating is. And this is actually a great way to show you guys what we're trying to illustrate here. So this load inflation index shows that this tire is capable of going up to 65 PSI. And at 65 PSI, this thing's rated for, these tires are rated for over 4,000 pounds each. Now that sounds really impressive, over 4,000 pounds per tire, but then you take into account that you have four tires, that means you have over 16,000 pounds of load rating between four tires at 16 or 65 PSI. That's way overkill for the weight of this truck. This truck probably barely weighs half that. Uh, so what you're going to, what that's gonna result in is a very stiff ride. Um, in fact, the tire will be so overinflated, it's probably gonna you know, shave a third of its lifespan off the overall tire wear. Uh, so it's you know again very critical why we're why, why we are so um, picky about tire pressures on these builds. Um, if you look inside the truck's door tag on this thing, it'll say maybe 80 psi. 80 psi is the time around your stock tires at you know stock wheels, stock tires, stock suspension, um, maxed out towing a load. Um, and for the sake of what we're talking about here, I would assume most of you guys are in aftermarket sus suspension, aftermarket wheels, aftermarket tires. In an ideal world, uh, you would consult this load inflation index and figure out, okay, these are my different pressures and th this is what the truck's, truck's capable of carrying. You take the truck to a dual axle scale, unloaded, and you would actually say, okay, this is what the truck weighs up front, unloaded, this is what the truck weighs in the rear, unloaded. You go back to the scale with a full load, same thing. This is, you know, this is what, these are basically the pressures I need. Um, this takes a lot of time, it's very involved and actually can be completely unnecessary. And we're gonna show you guys why. Um, we actually have what is commonly referred to on the internet as the chalk line test. This is a simple do-it-yourself way to determine how, you, how to adjust your tires properly to get an even amount of tread wear across so that you're not only overinflated on the tires, but you're actually resulting in a very pliable, comfortable ride on the truck. So what you're gonna need for this is very simple. So you need a tire pressure gauge, piece of chalk, big open parking lot, flat ground for your truck, and uh, what we're doing is most of these trucks are actually starting at 45 PSI front, 40 rear. That's a really good baseline. And that is actually where we always start when we're trying to figure out what the ideal pressure is for these trucks. Um, now every truck's gonna be different, right? So your truck may have a toolbox in the back. Your truck may have you know, tires with a thicker sidewall than what's on this truck or a thinner sidewall. So with all these different factors accounted for, we can basically help you guys dial in the exact tire pressure for what you need for your truck. What you're gonna need is actually a piece of chalk, um, a big wide open, um, really flat section of the ground, maybe about 30 to 40 feet to drive forward on. Um, we recommend again, that baseline about 45 PSI front, 40 PSI rear. And you're gonna go on each tire and basically take the chalk and real thick on a bunch, or basically straight across on each tire, you're going to fill in the actual contact portion of your tr your tire's tread and it needs to be on there good enough or well enough that you can actually see what's wearing and what's not so as you can see it's on there pretty thick so straight across just like that and you're gonna do this on all four of your tires again and once this is done you can go ahead and hop in the truck turn it on and you'll actually drive forward that 30 to 40 feet 
And uh, let's see what happens after that. You'll go ahead and hop out of the truck and inspect basically the amount of chalk that has worn across the tire tread. Uh, you'll notice the front is actually looking pretty good. Uh, it's still a little more uh, worn on the inside. If you notice the very outside of the lugs, there is still a lot more chalk there. So there's still some work to be done in the front. Not too bad though, not too far off. Now in the back, on the other hand, you'll notice it's a little more dramatic. See how thick the chalk is on the outside part of the lug. Uh, that's a lot more than what we're looking for. Um, so this tire is going to, have to actually go down a little more than what the front did. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull out the tire pressure gauge. Uh, you'll notice that front was pretty close. So it's a little, you know, need to be air down a little bit. The rear was a little more dramatic. So the rear, you can see it's actually going to need quite a bit more of a drop in pressure. Um, so if it's like the rear, I'd say maybe try even five PSI uh, increments as you drop down and then retest. Uh, keep in mind, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you still want to err on the side of caution. You don't want to um, let too much tire pressure on your tires because then you have to go find a compressor and air back up again. So up front, probably do about three PSI. I think that's all it's going to take to uh, guess where we need to be. So we'll go ahead and adjust these pressures front and rear accordingly and uh, test it again. Uh, one thing I want to keep in mind is there is a difference between hot PSI and cold PSI. Um, basically, the amount of time you've been driving the truck um, will actually di dictate if it's hot or cold internally. Outside temperatures can also have an effect if you live in an area with extreme temperatures. So uh, keep in mind there could be roughly a five plus PSI deviation depending on both how long you've been driving the truck and how hot or cold it is outside. So keep that in mind when accounting for these pressures on your truck. We usually like to go off the hot pressure because that really is what's happening while you're driving. A lot of these load index tables, as Tar understand that they're actually based off of the cold PSI. So just another consideration when you're figuring this out for your truck. We went ahead and drove it for the second time. You'll notice there is still a little more chalk on the outside of the tires than on the inside. This will be somewhat normal. Keep in mind, this tire has a pretty round profile to the tread. So a little bit more chalk on the very outside of the tire where the lug terminates is normal. This is still a little bit more chalk than we're looking for, so this front tire will actually have to be um, deflated a little bit more. In the back, you'll notice there is still quite a bit of room to go as well. Again, a little chalk on the outside is not an issue, but this is a little more than we're looking for, so we will need to adjust the pressure downward on the rear of this tire. Keep in mind as you're adjusting these tires down, if, you'll, if you end up finding that there is more chalk on the inside than on the outside, you have actually over deflated the tire. So try to avoid that. Again, it's a lot more difficult to find air to add than it's to deflate air. Um, this whole process, you know, may take several tries. It's in, you know, it's nothing crazy. Um, figure you may spend about 45 minutes on this. In our opinion, that 45 minutes is time well spent to both improve your ride quality and to significantly increase the life of your tires. Um, again, hopefully this helps you guys to better pick the pressures for your truck. Nice thing is too, once you've done this and figured out a pressure that works, it's not something you're having to change all the time per se. Now, um, one caveat to all this is that a lot of these trucks do tow occasionally. So sometimes we do adjust the pressures on the back of these trucks as we tow. Um, so that is a consideration as well. Uh, the chalk test still can apply when you're towing. So you could still do that kind of thing in the rear. That's a good possibility dropping the pressures below factory that you will see a light unless your truck is a Ram 3500, in which case you won't. But Ram 2500s, Power Wagons, Fords, uh, you guys will likely get lights. Nothing to be worried about. This is actually something that can, can be easily corrected. Um, if it's a Ram, you can use uh, AV ProCal available on our website or use a software application called Alpha OBD if you Google it. If your truck's a Ford, you can actually use a software application called Forescan. It's spelled F-O-R-S-C-A-N. There are all kinds of instructions online how to operate that. So again, not the end of the world if you get a light. There is an easy solution to fix it. Again, there's no exact recommendation on the pressures and that is the beauty of this chalk line test is every result will be different and you are actually fine tuning the pressure to your exact truck, your exact load. Um, that is why we really like doing this test, why we recommend it. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, if you, you know, obviously have any questions, we are happy to answer those for you guys. Feel free to re reach out via phone or via email. We have people standing by happy to provide any kind of recommendations we can to help you dial in your build and to make your truck as good as it can be.